discovered my deep and abiding interest in pain. At present, I'm writing the definitive work on the subject. So, I want you to be totally honest with me on how the machine makes you feel. Does it go up to 11? Rugen is polyam <laughs> with Humperdinck and the machine. <laughs> Cut to a dial with numbers ranging from a low of 1 to the high of 50. No, actually. say 11. Oh, 11. <laughs> okay, to a high of 11. Rugen goes to it. <laughs> this being our first try, I'll use the lowest setting. And he turns the dial to one. Cut to Wesley. He has suction cups on his head now, on his temple, on his heart, his hands and feet. He says nothing, keeps control of himself. Cut to Count Rugen fiddling with his machine a moment more. <laughs> then he opens the floodgate. Water pa pours down the chute, turning the wheel, which in turn really gets the machine going. It looks like it gets Count Rugen going as well. Oh my. It <laughs> oh sure my. does. Cut to Wesley and he's lying on the table and he's only flesh and the chains are metal and thick. But such is his desperation it almost seems he might break them. A terrible sound comes from his throat. Oh. An incessant gasping. <sighs> He keeps on coming as we finally cut to Count Rugen. He switches off the machine, picks up a large notebook and pen, sits in a chair. The noise of the machine subsides. As Rugen you know. Opens the book to a blank page. As you know, oh the concept my. of the suction pump is centuries old. Well, really, that's all this is, except that instead of sucking water, I'm sucking life. That doesn't I'm just mean sucking. Oh my. No, no. Again, we're just going to keep rolling forward. Oh. I have just sucked one year of your life away. Entirely scientific. And, yep. I might be able to go as high as five, but I really don't know what that would do to you. So let's just start with what we have. What did this do to you? Tell me. And remember, this is for posterity, so be honest. How do you feel? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Cut to Humperdinck in his quarters, swamped. Piles of papers are strewn all over. Now, Yellen, a pale, shifty, quick eyed man, appears in the doorway. All right, who's going to be Yellen? Uh, uh, let's do Beckham because Inigo it. disappeared from the movie for half of it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Yellen. Sorry. <laughs> As chief enforcer of all Florin, I trust you with this secret. Killers from Gilder are infiltrating the thieves' forest and plan to murder my bride on our wedding night. My spy network has heard no such news. Cut to Buttercup, Buttercup entering. <laughs> Buttercup. Words, I West. really have to control my wow. pronunciation a bit better. Okay, yes. Say the lion. Listen. Any word from Wesley? Too soon, my angel. Patience. He will come for me. Of course. As she glides out. She will not be murdered. On the day of the wedding, I want the thieves' forest emptied and every inhabitant arrested. Many of the thieves will resist. My regular enforcers will be inadequate. Form a brute squad, then! I want the thieves' forest emptied before I wed. It won't be easy, sire. Try ruling the world sometime. Wow. Cut to the thieves' forest day. A lot of hollering is going on. The thieves are being rounded up by the brute squad, a large group of large men. Yellen stands on a wagon in the midst of all the scuffling. The day of the wedding arrived. The brute squad had their hands full, carrying out Humberdink's orders. Yellen Who's the um, unpleasant-looking assistant? Oh, Yellen and Inigo have to be in the same scene. Uh, okay, that's fine. I mean, I did a scene with myself. Uh, but <laughs> um, who? Okay, show of hands. Who wants to be the unpleasant-looking assistant? Yeah, who's the unpleasant-looking assistant? No. All right, Stephen. All you. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is everybody out? Almost. There's a Spaniard giving us some trouble. Well, you give him some trouble. Move. And his wagon starts, 
and it as it does cut to an ego drunk as a skunk oh you'll need this sprawled, <laughs> <laughs> sprawled in front of a hovel hovel a, bu- a bottle of brandy in one hand a six-fingered sword in the other he looks dreadful unshaven puffy-eyed gaunt but the way he brandishes the great sword in front of him would give anyone cause for worry I am waiting for you, Vizini. You told me to go back to the beginning. So I have. This is where I am, and this is where I'll stay. I will not be moved. He takes a long pull from his brandy bottle. He stops as the assistant brute comes into view. Hold there. I don't know much. Keep your hold there. He waves his sword dangerously. But the prince gave orders. (laughs) So did Vizini. When the job went wrong, you went back to the beginning. And this is where I got the job. So it's the beginning, and I'm staying till Vizini comes. Good luck with that. (laughs) You! (laughs) You! Brute! Come here! I am waiting for Vizini. You surely are a mini! Inigo ah. feels a hand on his back, a huge hand. He compares it to his own smaller hand. Hello. <laughs> it's you. True. And as the assistant brute is just about to club Inigo's brains out, Fezzik lets fly with a su- stupendous punch. Fezzik punch! <laughs> Fezzik <laughs> punch! The assistant brute takes the full force of the blow right in the chops. It's like he was shot from a cannon as he careens backwards out of sight across the street. There is a pause, (laughs) then a crunching sound, as he clearly has come in contact with something hard and immobile. Fezzik puts Mm. Amigo down. You don't look so good. Oh, you don't smell so good either. Perhaps not. I feel fine. Yeah? And so Fezzik puts Inigo down. That's when Inigo faints. And as he does, cut to an empty alehouse in the thieves' quarter. Inigo sits slumped in a chair while Fezzik spoons him some stew. Aww. We're Aww. reunited. Aww. 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 True love. True love. <laughs> True love. Love uh, wins. Grandfather. Grandfather. Fezzik and Inigo were reunited, and as Fezzik nursed his inebriated friend back to health, he told Inigo of Vizini's death and the existence of Count Rugen, the six-fingered man. Considering Inigo's lifelong search, he handled the news surprisingly well. And he fates again into his stew. Cut to two large tubs, one filled with steaming water, the other with water clearly of an icy nature. Without a word, Fezzik stuffs Inigo's head into the icy water, then, after a reasonable amount of time, pulls him out, (laughs) ducks him into the steaming stuff, and a short time after that, puts him back in the cold again, then back in the hot. Fezzik took great care in reviving Inigo. But but one but the cold either the cold one or the hot one has the powder in it. You have to guess which one, huh? (laughs) Wait, wrong scene. (laughs) Same game. Larger scale. <laughs> Inigo. Inigo. You've been dunked into the water multiple times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's enough. It's enough. Where is this Rugen so I may kill him? He's in the. Uh, he's with the prince in the castle. But the castle gate is guarded by 30 men. How many can you hand? I don't think more than 10. Do the math on your you fingers as well, Rugen. Waiting for me. <laughs> At my best. I can <laughs> defeat that many. I need Vizini to plan. I have no gift for his strategy. But Vizini is dead. Oh. Cut mm. to the two of them, silent and bereft. Then a wild look hits an in- ego. No. Not Vizini. I need the men in black. There's aliens? Oh, I thought I thought that he was talking about uh, the country singer. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> Why I we wear black? Cash and we need him Look. now. Do you know, do you know I, I wear black for the... <laughs> Look, he bested you with your strength, your greatness. He bested me with steel. He must have outdot Vizini, and a man who can do that can plan my castle's onslaught any day. Let's go. Well. To find the man in black, obviously. Nod your head. Nod your <laughs> But you don't know where he is. Wait, this Inigo is the stage is direction that we need red. By yes, Idigo. He is possessed by demons now. Do not bother me with, <laughs> <Do not laughs> <bother> me with <laughs> trifles. After 20 years at last, my father's soul will be at peace. Cut to close up and ego. Big. There will be blood tonight. Big. Big. Big, big blood. Big. Big. Big, big rigs Cut over the road. There racing. will be blood tonight! <laughs> Cut to Prince Humperdinck's chambers, strewn with maps, etc. Yellen enters and kneels. Humperdinck. 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 Rise and report. I'm I'm here. Rise and report. Uh, <laughs> the Beckham was here. Forest is empty. Thirty men guard the castle gate. Double it. My princess must be safe. The, the gate. Has you okay, Are you okay? <laughs> you I died okay? again. I died that <laughs> night. <laughs> no. I'm alive! The gate has but one key, and I carry that. He shows the key dangling from a chain around his neck. Just at that moment, the buttercup enters. Ah, my dulcet darling. Tonight we marry. Tomorrow morning, your men will escort us to Florin will escort us to Florin Channel, where every ship in my armada waits to accompany us on our honeymoon. <laughs> I'm the dread pirate Roberts, and you're sailing the Florin Channel. <laughs> do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Every ship but your four fastest, you mean? The prince. Every ship but the four you sent. Yes, yes, of course. Naturally, not those four. He forgot his own lie. <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassing. Your Majesties. Exits. That's me exiting, okay. Cut to Buttercup staring at Humperdinck. You never sent the ships. Don't bother lying. It doesn't matter. Wesley will come for me anyway. You're a silly girl. Yes, I am a silly girl. But not having seen sooner that you were nothing but a coward with a heart full of fear. Also, I'm also, real silly. So silly. <laughs> I am a quirky girl. I'm not like Humperdinck the other is... girls, Humperdinck. <laughs> Humperdinck is close to erupting and... and speaks very distinctly. I would not say such things if I were you. A Why not? Of my... <laughs> you can't hurt me. Wesley and I are joined by the bonds of love, oh. and you cannot track that. Not with a thousand bloodhounds, and you cannot break it. Not with a thousand swords. If and when I say you that you are it. a coward, <laughs> that is only because you are the slimiest weakling to ever crawl the earth. Damn. Got your ass. All right, just say it. Just go for it, Dave. No stage direction. I, I would not say such things if I were you. <laughs> Cut to a corridor of the castle as the prince throws open the door to Buttercup's room, slams it shut, locks it, breaks into a wild run, and cut to Wesley in the machine, but it's not on. Count Rugen is adding more notes to his book. Mm -hmm. He looks mm -hmm. up as the prince mm -hmm. suddenly comes down the steps, raging. You truly love each other, and so you might have been truly happy. Not one couple in a century has that chance, no matter what the storybooks say. And so I think no man in a century will suffer as greatly as you will. And with that, he wills, turns on the machine, grabs the lever, and... Not to 50! You mean 11. <laughs> Not to 11! <laughs> All the way to 11. <laughs> it's too this late. many! Too much! <laughs> it's too late as we cut to Prince Humperdinck shoving the lever all the way up. And cut oh. to Wesley's face. And there has never been such pain. 
The pain grows and grows, and with it now, something else has started. The death scream. <laughs> as the death scream starts to rise, yes, cut to outside the pit of despair. As the sound moves along, louder and louder, cut to Yellen and his 60 brutes as they fear it. And a few of the brutes turn to each other in fear, and the scream builds. <laughs> and to Monica up in her room. And she hears the sound, doesn't know what it is, but her arms involuntarily go around her body to try and control the trembling and the scream. Still builds and cut to establishing shot across the river. There are many people. It is the day of the country's 500th anniversary, but all the people stop as the sound hits them. <laughs> the children fail, fall towards their parents, and cut to an ego and Fezzik trying to make their way through the jam marketplace, which suddenly quiets as the fading sound comes through. You ever, you ever just need to scream into your cheat? Yeah. That was more of I a cheat I think that's scream. actually your, your If I have screamed into the microphone, that would be a real scream. But by, by using something soft to scream into, that's what's called cheat screaming. Mm. <laughs> cheat screaming with mm. the cheat? Yeah. <laughs> Busy. We do seem to... The cheat is a millionaire! <laughs> yeah. Instantly. Instantly, guys. Oh, oh, instantly. <laughs> instantly. Fezzy. Instantly. Fezzy. Listen. Do you hear? That is the sound of ultimate suffering. My heart made that sound when Rugen slaughtered my father. The man in black makes it now. The man in black? <laughs> <laughs> His true love is very So, <laughs> who else? has cause for ultimate suffering. Excuse me. It's too crap. Pardon me. It's important. No one budges and the sound is fading faster. Is it? Please. Yes, just one second in the room. <laughs> it touched my breath. <laughs> it's very difficult being this loud. Fezzy, um, please. Okay. Everybody, move! And the crowd begins to fall away, and he and Nigo start to track the fading sound. Does anybody else feel kind of lightheaded? <laughs> You're the only one here who chugged two glasses of wine and then screamed for two straight minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Fizzy. <laughs> Cut to the grove of trees near the pit of despair. The albino appears wheeling a barrow. Inigo's sword pushes at his chest. Where is the men in black? The albino shakes his head, says nothing. Shake your head. <laughs> You got there from this grove, yes? Silence. Fizzy. Jog his memory. <laughs> Bonk. <laughs> and Fezzi crunches the albino on top of the head as if he had a hammer and was driving in a nail. The albino drops without a sound. I'm sorry, Inigo. I didn't mean to jog him so hard. Inigo. Cut to Inigo. He kneels, the sword held tight between his hands, eyes closed. He faces the grove of trees, starts to talk, his voice low and strange. Father, I have failed you for 20 years. Now, our misery can end. Somewhere, somewhere, close by is a man who can help us. I cannot find him alone. I need you. I need you to guide my sword. Please. And now he rises, eyes still closed. Guide my sword. Cut to the grove of trees as an ego, eyes shut tight, walks forward, the great sword <coughs> held in his hands. Fezzik, frightened, follows close behind. Cut to the secret knot, return of the secret knot, that reveals the staircase. Cut to Inigo, walking blind through the grove of trees. He moves to the secret knot, hesitates, then moves past it. Then Inigo stops. For a long moment, he stands frozen. Suddenly, he whirls. I still No, closed. not frozen, but that is also on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, yeah. 
And the sword strikes home dead center into a knot and nothing. He has failed. In utter despair, he cl collapses against the tree. Against a knot in the tree. Against THE knot in the tree. It's in caps, so it slides away, revealing the staircase. Who's the Anita knot who looks her. like the knot? <laughs> the, the naughtiest knot, if you will. <laughs> I would even go as far as to call it nautical. Eh. Eh. Cut to Wesley dead by the machine. Oh, good. Dead. Fezzik leans go. over him. <laughs> Lean over yourself. Uh. Listening for a heartbeat. Um, hold on. Then he looks at an ego, shakes hold his on, head. I'm wait, hang on. This is awkward to angle. All right. Oh, wait. I got it. I got it. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> Inigo is in despair for a moment. He just sags. It just is not fair. And if Steven's yeah. inner is... some connectivity issues. Yeah. Mm. All right. All right. I'll do it. Uh, Steven, if Steven's having tech issues, I'm going to do it as Dipper. <laughs> uh, wait. What did Fezzik mean he's dead? Uh, uh, I mean, he didn't mean Dan. Good. The grandfather uh, says uh, nothing, just sits there. W Wesley's only thinking, right? You want me to read this or not? Who gets Humperdinck? I, I don't understand. Who kills Prince Humperdinck? At the end, someone's got to do it. I is it an Inigo? Uh, who? No, it's um that, that Rugen guy. That, that's who gets to do him. <laughs> What? Nobody. Nobody no, kills him. No. He lives. I think you misunderstood oh. me, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's up the what door. I've actually got to go just a moment. Sorry. You're good. <sighs> but but nobody. Nobody kills him. He lives. Excuse me. Sorry. Hang on. <laughs> you mean he wins? Uh, Jesus, Grandpa. Dipper says Jesus. <laughs> Dipper has become Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you even read me this thing? You, you know, you've been very sick, and you're taking this story very seriously. I, I think we better stop now. No, I'm not sick. I just went through puberty real quick. <laughs> Hello. Right. Hi, Stephen. All right. Is it working? Uh, yes, it's working. Yeah. All right. Uh, he closes the book and starts to get up, and the kid shakes his head, and that's your line. Uh. <laughs> Starts to get it. Oh, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. Sit down. All right. Wait, whose line? Your line. Whose line? Your line is it anyway? <laughs> You're okay, you say. Sitting and opening the book. Oh, great. Hang on one second, guys. I think I got to refresh my thing. Okay. Okay. Sitting and opening the book again. All right, now let's. Cut to Inigo in despair. We're back in the pit, the same shot as before. For a moment, he just sags. What the crap happened? Well, the door. <laughs> we Montoya's are ah, taking the feet easily. Come along, Fizzy. Um, Bring the ball. I can't hear anyone. Uh, just oh. re oh. tell someone type. <laughs> I can't type gloves. Someone type restart Discord and add uh Captain D gloves. <laughs> Whew. I can't type. Uh, Tonight is going great. <laughs> no, it is going great. I'm having a... Alright, hang on one second, y'all. Uh, I'm gonna try messing with Discord and everything. <laughs> Discord is indeed balls. Terribly sorry about this, y'all. straight minutes. Can you hear us, Diablos? That... anything yet? Any... there I, is... I can't hear anything there still. There is hair dye on my thumb from when I poured water on my face. Oh. <laughs> Hello? 
Hi, uh, hi, hello, gonna, can um, you hear us? Hello. Yeah. You unplugged your headphones accidentally. I'm just gonna... Good um, job. <laughs> <laughs> that might have something to do with you. Um, my, at, thumb is gold, my thumb is gold now from when I poured the water on my face, part of the hair dye came off. You're supposed to have a green thumb! But, not me. I'm not the farmer, that's Buttercup. Oh wait, I'm the farm boy. Oh. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah. Oh no. Okay, anyway, where were we now? Um... Alright, now, let's see. Where were we? Oh yes, in the pit of despair. We can just keep going to the next scene. Alright, Inigo. Well... We Montoyas have never taken defeat easily. Come along, Fezzik. Bring the body. The body? Have you any money? I have a little. I just hope it's enough to buy a miracle. That's all. 